Welcome to the Tech Sales Show, where we are dedicated to making you a better tech seller, sharing tried and true sales strategies and answering your questions weekly. What's up, Brian? Hey, hey, Bobby. Here we are. It's Monday yet again. It's a day like any other day. But hopefully today we teach you how to run your daily activity plan. This is episode 139, Listener's Choice 34. And I find it happens to me quite often, unfortunately, uh, when I don't have a plan, Brian, that I wake up, go through the entire day, kind of wrap up my day and realize, huh, I didn't quite get those things done I wanted to get done. And so that's what we're going to help the listeners with today. What's on your agenda today, Brian? How do you know what you're going to do? Well, I, for, for better or for worse, Bobby, I live and die by my calendar. I, as kind of a, as a lot of us are in sales with kind of alpha personalities, we want to uh, solve things. We want to fix things. We want to uh, confront things. And uh, that can be a very distracting scenario. So I, I've, I try to work on a very intentional uh, calendar across all the different ventures that I'm working on to, to ensure that I'm productive and that I get the most important things done every day. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I thought I was uh, watching some of the recent space stuff. I'm fascinated with how far SpaceX has come. And what's a pretty short period of time, it's been almost 15, 20 years, as Elon Musk would say. But I think, man, I think I'm busy. Like, what's that guy got on his plate? Like, he's in California. He's coming to Texas. He launches a rocket here one day. He launches a rocket in Florida. He sends people to space. They come home from space. He's at all these meetings. Like, how does he keep up with all that stuff? I know he's got a lot of assistance and a lot of help, but uh, when I think I'm busy, uh, I'm nowhere near what Elon Musk is putting in on an activity plan. It really does wake you up to if if, if we think, uh, and it's a lot. It's in a lot of the Ryan Holiday books. But if we think that we are uh, too busy to handle stuff, we're probably too much in the weeds on some things. And maybe we can afford more personal assistance like we did when we talked about that a couple weeks ago, or or maybe it's just being more efficient with our time. But it really is a lesson in efficiency. No doubt. And saying no, right? Like that's the big piece. And uh, that's not a topic today, but we've talked about it many times in the past. A lot of people reach out and some of my coaching students, they they ask me like, do you have suggestions on how I should structure my day? And everybody's got a different job everybody's everybody's got a different role and if this if this was our best attempt this is our attempt at kind of structuring a generic salesperson's day every one of these tips and tricks might not fit for each of you but it it is really about kind of where to focus where to spend the time and where to focus the most valuable part of your day on the most valuable things and if I had to, from an introduction perspective, say what I see happens more often than not is people get distracted by the urgent not, and they're not focusing on the important, right? We've, we've probably seen quotes. We've, we've talked about it in the past. That's where I see the biggest hole being. Brian, would you agree? Yes, and then I would also add that I also see people over schedule their calendar in an attempt to be um, you know, organized they end up putting 62 meetings on their calendar in a week, which leaves no time for strategic thinking, no time for like the work that has to get done. And that means you're probably not saying no to the right things. No doubt. Uh, one thing I'll say is we've talked about my stop the madness STM on my calendar makes people wonder what, what is this special STM thing, but I do block time. I probably block more time now. Um, Warren Buffett, you know, tries to only have three or four meetings a week because he's really always trying to think forward and, you know, see the big things coming. I think anybody and everybody would tell you time is what you can't get back and to just be busy is not valuable, right? So um, we'll we'll talk more about that. Um, As sales reps, we really have one job and that job, it's not going to change no matter what kind of job you're in from a sales perspective. Your job is to increase revenues and profits for your company. And while companies say it, and they probably really mean it, and while your manager, no offense, Brian, probably says it and really means it, we get pulled in a million different directions. Have you ever talked to a manager in the morning like during a one-on-one, Brian, me maybe, that said, I need you to really hunker down and focus on revenue, drive revenue, and then before lunch got a phone call like, hey, I really need you to slow down and focus on this list. I need this updated list of 
customers in oil and gas so I can get it to my boss. You know, how many times have you been pulled away for a fire drill, Brian, right after you were told to focus only on this other one thing? Yeah, it's like every every company I've ever worked for, right? Because that's while that's certainly the intention. Uh, on Tuesday, we we just finished up our fiscal quarter, and um, on two, Monday things were pretty quiet. On Tuesday, I, before nine a.m., I had seven emails, and they were not revenue focused. They were very much tactically focused. Um, but it's like it, but that's not even their fault necessarily. It's just like there are just many things to do in a business and no if doubt. you don't allow if you allow your time to get sucked up in that stuff you will not be you will not produce revenue and they're not going to forgive you for not producing revenue that's right and and the 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 I'll say the immature lower average sales reps are the reps that you know solely focus on trying to make a bunch of other people happy managers uh partners all these different people and what we really got to do is be able to say no when we get asked to do those tasks at the moment that we have the opportunity to Im- impact revenue and then take them offline at some other point, right? The bucket's full of things for us because there are a lot of things to do in business. We have admin tasks like expenses, forecast adjustments, quarterly briefings come up, one-on-ones that we need to prepare for, executives come into town, you know, invite customers to this event for marketing. Hey, we got a big golf tournament. Can you invite customers? Can you see if any of your customers have people who live in these cities to do these things? Internal training, probably monthly, quarterly. New products come out. Middle week, we have to learn about partner meetings, partner planning, offsite, we, the high happy hours. The list could go on and on and on. But that's the role of sales, right? At the end of the day, the most important thing for us to do is focus on increasing revenue and profits. And it's understanding too, like have a have a good relationship with your manager to understand is part of your one on ones. And Bobby, you've talked to maybe it's time to we resurface this uh, episode to where you need to own the one on one with your manager. Is there? There's going to be. I, I mean, if you work for a bigger company, certain maybe even a smaller company, there's going to be so much noise coming. Marketing needs you to fill out this form. Uh, you know, the corporate sales development team needs you to do this activity. Understand with your manager, like what is really being measured. And what is just noise? Because there are people that think they are doing all the right things by filling out all that noisy stuff, and they're just getting crushed on the back end. So, like, truly understand, like, what's critical. Because some of those things are important. Some of those things are getting measured. Some of those things will have career impacts for you. But know what's important. Know what's a waste. Well, when that work happens, it's never futile, meaning it's never... It's never intended to just be work. You know, somebody in my last company, somebody, you know, in the business unit would want to some information. So they would find it that the right way to do it is we'll just put in Salesforce and ask every salesperson, do they only have four or five enterprise accounts? We'll just ask every salesperson to check this box and then we'll know what we need. We could just, then run reports right out of, right out of Salesforce. And so they add a checkbox and that checkbox is like, has spinning disk storage. Well, Okay. And I get asked, you get asked to update that. We need that by the end of the day today. We really need that by the end of the day today. Well, I'm just going to go check all four boxes because that that's so low value that mm-hmm. it's not going to change things, right? And you have to be able to stand by that answer if you get called back and says, really, all four of your customers have spending disks? Yes. And be able to talk to it. But sometimes you can get those check boxes off your, off your radar and you, you can get off someone else's radar. So this week, we're going to talk about how to stay organized, who you should focus on, and what you should do each day. So how to stay organized. This is something that I wish I could fix for everybody because I'm a I, like you, Brian. My calendar's pretty strong today. I kind of got it pretty mapped out all the way through my dinnertime activities and pretty much know what show on Netflix I'm going to watch tonight already as well. The day is set, man. But much like I can't change and make unorganized people organized, I can't I can't change people's motivation either, right? So th- that's the best example that I have. Like either you're motivated to go make changes, exercise, work hard on a sport to improve, whatever, or you're not. And that's going to pretty much translate to this. Either you're going to get organized or you're not going to get organized. I can't flip a switch and help you be organized. And so what do we do, Brian? As as two guys that are extremely organized, we have to-do lists out the wazoo. Um, I have post-it notes on my desk that have come up from today that will make their way into Trello or some to-do app. 
And we don't drop balls. The two of us, I don't know of a time where either one of us have really let the other one down because we dropped a to-do. And that's because we keep track of them. And we do them. Now, we've probably called each other and said, look, I'm not doing this anymore, which is okay. But we we keep track of those things that are going to be done or the things we're going to take off of our to-do list. Yeah, and then then with that, your to-do list, it can become unwieldy. But you... That gives you an opportunity to like take a step back and say, "I've thought about all these things we need to do. I need to do that need to get accomplished. What what are going to make the biggest move for me? Like what what's the most strategic thing that I can be working on? And so it's it's this constant kind of reorganization process with that to do list. I've got I, I use Trello and that's that happens to be the one I like right now. I like to switch them between, but that the, the the point of it is, and the reason I like to to Trello at the moment is that. I can kind of resort out like these are the things I must get done today um, versus like these are interesting things. These are things I want to get done, but I'll get to them when I get to them. Yeah, it's funny. Last week, <clears throat> you, I've added another desktop on my Mac that has just a different browser with Trello in it so that every time I click Chrome, it doesn't come up. But I have uh, across the board, I'm, I'll read it right now. Today must do's, personal to do's, United Fly Systems to do's. And TSL to do's. Uh, so I uh, also, one thing that came to mind when you said that is I have a parking lot, which is kind of my brainstorming area. And then I have a all caps, non urgent stuff. And there's literally a video in there that I'd like to watch that I'll probably never watch, but it's there because I don't want to be distracted. If I put that in my must do's today, I would do it. And I'd probably lose 30 minutes of my day that I'm not going to get back, but it's a video I want to watch. So if yeah. you think about organizing things like that, that's going to be helpful in the grand scheme of things from salespeople. There's really key things, three, three key things that, that people need to focus on, um, that they should organize. It's our customers, our pipeline and our time. And while those seem really big and broad, I would bet if I, if I spent a day following a rep that I might be coaching or ask me for help, none of that stuff's in order, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not in order, so they can't ever catch up. They can't get rid of the noise. Uh, we've provided some tools in the past on how you can organize your pipeline, your customer list, and all that stuff. Today we'll provide a tool that you can you know, manage your time and day. Um, and we've also done that with customers. So there's, there's tools out there to help you, but we can't make you use those tools to be more productive and, and kind of organize your life. And what I've seen in myself and what I've seen in others is that whenever – Whenever I'm not organized, whenever I don't know the most uh, the most important things that need to get done, very little gets done. Twitter gets done, you know. Yep. Not, and so it's like this. It's like a compounding negative effect of you're not. Not only do you not know the most important thing that needs to get done, or the most important things that need to get done, kind of nothing gets done because it's mm-hmm. just a. Uh, there's no structure to it. Yep. Boy, have I been caught scrolling and looking, and it, it happens. You know, it's. We've talked about too much. I won't even I won't even derail us today, but it's tough to not get distracted and stay on task. And then a lot of times I find, quite frankly, the work part sucks. It's not as fun as scrolling, right? So I have I have two really big things I want to get done today. And if those get done, the weight of the world's gonna come off my shoulders, right? Um and they were on my list earlier in the week, but they're gonna get done today, hopefully, knocking on wood. But so how do you stay organized? We, we, we've we kind of given you some tips and tricks. As you get organized, focus on the customers and your pipeline and your time. And I think all the other stuff will kind of fall into place. So part two today is who you should focus on. So we talked about the high, the how. Now we're talking about the who. So who should you focus on? Look, I think I see people focus on making their manager happy focusing on making their team happy. Those strengths are not mine. I do not I don't bring donuts in for the flight school and hope everybody has a happy day at the donut having having a donut. I'm focused on work and flight training. At TSL, I'm focused on teaching people to be better sellers. My focus sometimes makes me look like a hard ass or not the fun guy. Um but I I focus on customers. I I have an unwielding desire to to help the customer i will buy donuts for the customer (laughs) i will take care of those people for sure yeah and you defocus on customers too when you know that like it's it's like this ruthless mentality of like 
where is the opportunity? Where am I going to invest my time? That doesn't mean I'm going to be short-sighted and not build relationships with customers that could be, you know, prospects that could be customers in the future. But, but I'm not burning cycles, not burning time, not burning uh, energy on stuff that's not going to produce uh, revenue when it comes to work. And I do make sure that I adapt my weaknesses. We talked about that, and I'll derail for one quick second. This week, I did pull in a great flight instructor in my office and said, hey, in my monthly email I sent out that some people are struggling and some people are rock stars. I just want you to know that you are one of those rock stars, and I appreciate everything you're doing. And you could tell to a 25-year-old kid that it meant a lot to him to hear that. Uh, and it is important, but I knew it was like on my to-do list. You got to make sure you talk to Jacoby because – you, you haven't talked to anybody in a while. So it's not that I'm a, I don't appreciate it. It's just I have a hard time sharing that appreciation. Um, so as we think about focusing on customers and, and all the other noise that we may have, I've heard a million excuses. The answer almost every time is sales is not easy. This is a hard job. You make a lot of money. You got to spend time focused on customers, building raving fans and doing the hard work and making yourself available. I talked about this a few times in the past, but when I was a rep, when I was a strategic engagement manager at Microsoft and I would go on vacation, I never turned on my out of office, whether it was a business trip or whether it was a family vacation. Some of my views on my, my, my disconnecting have changed since then, but you know, I, I pick on salespeople that turn their out of office on and give like all these other people for people to contact. What would happen if you did that? If you called the phone company and they said, well, if you're having problem with your modem, call so-and-so. If you're having problems with your um, TV, call so-and-so. You know, we, we don't like those menus and we they're sure as heck are not good at sharing those with customers in an out of office email. So the likelihood is you're still checking your email. You still, you know, you still know you have a customer that has a need. Take two seconds to help that customer. Find a way to focus on them. And it's more so the night times and evenings when people have fire drills and need help, et cetera. You, you see the email, you should find a way to help them. That's the focus that I'm talking about. That's the focus that I think you should have on customers and take care of them. And to me, that includes customers and partners and kind of that ecosystem of people that are going to do the one thing that's most important to me, and that's grow revenues and profits for my company. Any tips for focus, Brian? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely get the uh, keeping the out of office uh, off whenever, like if you're traveling or something, because kind of to your point, you're still in those scenarios, you're still at the airport and you're still checking your email, you're still forwarding things along, you're still getting things accomplished. I am big on, certainly as I got older, big on like kind of shutting off email and like really being off to recharge the batteries. But in my 20s and 30s, it was, it was about producing as much as I absolutely could. And I was willing to sacrifice a bit of not turning the brain off on vacations uh, to be to produce more revenue. Yeah, and, and again, my views have changed. It's more of a, a, of a mm -hmm. example of focus for those that are losing focus, right? If you do that, you're gonna you're gonna stay more on track. You're gonna do the things that you're paid to do. Um, and it might sound simple to say, I'll oh, just focus on the customers or focus on partners. But it is a huge gap that salespeople have. Like, I can, I, I can have this conversation quite often. Somebody's interested in coaching. I ask them what they want coaching on, and, and they always want to make more money. That's good, and I'm going to help them make more money. But the, the conversation that I have is like, okay, tell me what's not working. Where are you spending your time? What's not, not, what's not getting done that needs to get done? Where can I help you? It's really where can I help you? And every time, these people are not selling. I mean, it's it's crazy. They're not picking up the phone and calling. I figure out what their territory is, what they're responsible for, how they go to the market today. And none of them have a real plan to sell. And so it, while it sounds easy to say focus on your customers, it, you would be shocked in my shoes how many people are focused on selling to their customers and running a deal. It is a big, big, big gap that salespeople have. And I think it's from a mindset maybe – of if I could take an order, that, that work would be easy. But the work that we're paid to do is to go sell your kit, whatever your kit is, storage array, servers, software, cloud services. You're going to convince people to go buy that stuff. That's different than taking an order. Yeah, and I think maybe maybe part of the mindset is like part of the pa panic I had early days and, and probably still do to a certain extent is what 
what evaluations are going on in my territory or in these days, my team's territory, what evaluations are going on for products that, that we sell that could solve the challenges there's in, they're encountering that we don't even know are happening out there. And as a, as a young AE, that was like my, my biggest fear in the world at Microsoft was like, what am I missing? Or at soft choice, you know, maybe they were unhappy with their, uh, their, you know, vendor at CDW and, and they're just kind of not waiting for me to call, but they didn't know what they were missing. And I could feel that gap and like that constant pressure to like, I'm missing opportunity. I'm missing a, a chance to make revenue here. Like drove me to focus on, uh, on the customer to your point. Yeah. We've, <laughs> We've said this a million times. You're not the only one selling to your customers. There's a lot of people running campaigns you're not aware of that you could probably solve. And it, there, no matter if we could give you 48 hours in a day, there's still never going to be enough time to attack everything you could attack. So you got to focus. you got to pick the ones that are going to be the good ones, the big ones, and the ones that are real deals and not dead plants. We've said it before, focus on the right things. I think that's you should be focused on the customer and what they need, and you will you'll have the pipeline to go close for sure. Okay, so we've talked about the how and now the who. Let's talk about the what. What should you do each day? And this is a funny one, and I spend a lot of time uh, helping my students, the coaching customers that I have, build out the perfect day. And uh, I doubt that I can do it for everybody, but we've, we've put together a tool that we'll release that – should guide some of your thought processes on how to start the day and how to do the day and how to win the day. Um, Brian, what, what's a, I hate to even ask you this cause I know there's not such thing, but what's a typical day look like for Brian Evans? Uh, typical day, uh, get up, get a little reading done. Um, uh, try to get my Bible study done. I'm not always great at that. Um, my calendar dictates it, so uh, you know it could be a customer meeting that I'm that I want to get prepared for. It could be a QBR that we have coming up next week that I need to get prepared for. Um, but it starts kind of with a bit of structure and a bit of coffee, and then it's it's just what I've prepared the week prior, oftentimes. Uh, so it's not a surprise. Things. It's not a surprise. Yeah, it's not a surprise. Yeah, yeah it's it's like I try to the I try to intentionally keep blocks free on the calendar. And then I, I do, I still put STM on my calendar, stop the madness on my calendar so that I can slot in like the most important things I need to do outside of the tactical meetings that I've got throughout the day. Like, uh, I, I've, I've seen this and I hear this a lot, right? Like, you know, I need to do my expense report and, uh, I'm, I'm kind of behind on my expense report. Is that something, is that something that Brian Evans does it at 9am on a Wednesday morning to, to knock that activity out? It would be early morning or evening for an right. expense report. Yep. So outside of the business hours, mm -hmm. right? Like, and I think I think a lot of people look. This isn't a forty-hour week job. It's not eight to five. We're not clocking in. Go ahead. It, yeah, where it could be, Bobby. Even you know, we've all had the webinars to where we have to kind of listen in and be present on it. I could be doing expense report during that time too. No doubt. If you're on Brian's team, please, next time he's doing a <laughs> webinar for you, please, please do your expense reports and send us a screenshot. You know, that it, it's, but it's true. Like there's all kinds of ways to fit in the minutia of the job, the administrative tasks of the job during other activities or in uh, outside of office hours. You know, I did all my training all the time. I did all my training after hours or before hours. I never would give up selling time for that. And because your company says Mondays are internal days and Fridays are catch-up days, you, you, that doesn't mean you only sell Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, right? That's 60% of the week. Like, get the stuff done outside of business hours. And if you're hearing that, you're going, no way, I'm not doing that. The company pays me to be here. I'm going to do it. During, you're, you're not going to make it. You're not going to be rich. You're not going to be the person that, that does the kind of numbers that great sales reps do. So... I think you have to you have to kind of set up your day for success from a standpoint of I'm going to focus on customers, I'm going to focus on the important, and all the other stuff is going to get done, and it's going to get done at a time that's not going to impact those two things. Um, so my my day as a sales rep would probably start again. I've I've had a plan, I've had a rhythm, so my day's pretty full. Depending on the structure of the month or quarter, 
I have probably a different weight on my activity, right? It's from a prospecting to a closing kind of mindset. But I would definitely every day, every day, and, and as a salesperson, I would have some sort of a call block on my calendar. Uh, and that's probably, as an enterprise rep, that'd probably be 30 minutes, you know, where I was just checking in on people, projects, and things going on. But I would have a call block where I was trying to generate and find find opportunities. In the morning, you know, if you've listened to this show at all, I have a I would have a call 10 plan. I would pick up the phone and call somebody in my network and talk to them. And then my my meetings are on my calendar, so I have those. I would probably have a little STM in the afternoon to catch up on follow-ups and make sure that I met my own 24-hour rule on follow-ups. And then I would make sure there's probably one big rock, whether it's a proposal I'm working on, whether it's a project we're trying to seed. I've got either a call planned, scheduled for that, or I've got my own time where I'm trying to just reflect and build the structure of that deal out, right? Like, I think that's where people miss um, it, it, they're not all the same. So I would, I, I have a whiteboard in my office here where I it just, it's a, it's one I can put in my lap and draw out everything that I think is important to the customer and focus on that and come up with a strategy for that. And you know what, no matter how good my daily activity plan is, there's going to be fire drills. And I, I think you got to build in your own head that you're not going to let them distract you. You're not going to let them ruin your plan for the day. You, your boss calls and says, I need this. I need it by noon. Okay what's the consequences if I can't get it to you blah you know there's a way to negotiate on oh, is sure. noon really a hard stop or um you know we have a million dollar deal that could slip do you want to do you want one more slip deal this quarter or do you want a fire drill and and what you have to be good about is making sure you don't cry wolf right so you say I'm going to lose a million dollar deal because it's fire drill you could do that maybe once but every deal you lose because of fire drills that's going to be a problem so uh, and then I would, I'd take care of all my internal training, my expenses, all that stuff after hours. Expenses are only a problem people if you let them get out of hand. Yeah. One thing I negotiate almost right away with every manager I work for is that, is that help me not have emergencies. So if we're going to have extended teams, like you said, Bobby, before about checking the four boxes about, you know, spinning discs and stuff. Help, help, help me be a more efficient sales leader, salesperson, account executive, overlay, whatever my job is. Help be, me be more efficient by protecting my time as well. So when you have the marketing group or you have the extended team or something that tries to put a fire drill out there, say, nope, that's not the way we operate in this business. You, you know, I recognize that this data is important to you. I recognize that you're going to need my team to accomplish something you're trying to accomplish. But we're going to, we operate in a, a strategic way and we're not going to get randomized. And so I, I, I help my managers with that because I, because I don't want them randomizing me because mm-hmm. it will destroy your day, especially if you have a crazy day built out. So I, like I said before, I always try to, you know, the, the Friday or the week before look at my schedule, not let it get overloaded because fire drills will happen 100% of the time. And if I've got a crazy calendar built out, those fire drills destroy two or three days. No you doubt. Know, a half day fire drill destroys three days. And you just said something that's interesting that, that you, you prepare that you prepare for next week on the Friday or the week before. I, I've heard a lot of stories where people prepare the night of, the night before, the day of. They wake up in the morning and there's this, you know, don't use our daily activity plan for each day the day you wake up because that's not gonna work either. Um that's gotta that's kinda gotta be a, a roadmap for you, a guide. But if you're doing it then, what what is the normal person going to put on their daily activity plan if they do it the morning of? All the urgent crap yeah. that's distracting them. I mean, it's the worst way to do it. So if you can't get in a rhythm that you're going to focus on the important and keep running that important out in front of you, um, you're going to constantly be in this churn. What other tips do you have, Brian, if any, on what you should do each day? Um I, I try to wake up in the, with the mindset and I've got time blocked off as an AE, certainly on the calendar as how can I progress a deal forward, even if it's just one small step. If you ever feel like it's overwhelming, I've got these deals, these pursuits that I'm working on, this new customer I'm trying to win, this existing customer I'm trying to upsell. And it's like, it's all just jumbled together in your mind. Make one small step with one customer and that oftentimes will provide you the momentum or build a new engagement plan. We've talked about that episode after episode, build a new evaluation plan to get back on, on track, not at random, like this, these types of strategic blocks should be on your calendar. And then 
Second, this is a huge mistake I see people that are prospecting, is they try to build a plan to boil the ocean. Like, for example, they'll say, you know what? I could probably hit one customer a day. Like, build a real strategic plan for one customer a day and hit, like, 10 different personas for that one customer. It never works that way because a shotgun will go off in one day, destroy that day. You're behind on that customer. You're going to do two the next day. You look at your calendar. You see two. You say, you know what? I'm too tired. I cannot do two. Plus, I've got this deliverable that's due Friday. So you skip prospect, and now you've missed it two days. The third day, you're like, oh, I don't even know what customer I'm going to focus on today. It happens again and again and again. So think, start small. Don't don't try to boil the ocean because that stuff gets pushed out. And then again, like the way I do, the way I hold true to this is by being is by saying no to people. Is by saying no, I cannot do that meeting. I, we had a, a good a good example of this is like we were towards the end of Q three uh, Q two uh, for the past several weeks. I've got a couple of partners that wanted just thirty minutes with me, Bobby. Just thirty minutes. Like, what's the big deal? Can you don't have thirty minutes for me at the end of the quarter? And the answer is no. I don't. Yep. I want to talk to you. It's important to me. Our relationship is important to me. And I know I'm not the partner guy, but <laughs> the relationship is important to me. And I will spend one hour with you, but it will be in two weeks. It will be when the quarter is over and I've had a t- chance to take a deep breath and prepare for my QBR. And then let's spend an hour together. Yep. I think that's important too is is th- that you listen and, and carve out the time that, that when it's the right time too, right? A lot of times uh, I've heard people say, well, I, I do use y'all's tip on stop the madness. But what ends up happening is that partner calls me and says, do you have just 30 minutes? And I'm looking at this two-hour block of stop the madness. And I end up saying, well, yeah, I'll take that 30-minute phone call. And then I get distracted. And that, that 30 minutes becomes eats up that whole two hours. And then I didn't get anything done. And, and that's disorganization. That's not having the ability to say no. And that is the biggest problem on you not focusing on what you should focus on for each day. With that, let's wrap things up. So we have a, today, we've talked a little bit about a, a daily activity plan. We're going to provide you a tool. We talked about how to stay organized, who to focus on, and what you should do each day. Too many reps let other people drive their activity. They let their managers distract them. They let their partners distract them. They let internal teams distract them. I think winners don't let that happen. I think people that are blowing out their numbers don't let that happen. And above average reps don't let that happen. So go check out the tool uh, on our website, techsalesshow.com slash tools. Make it your own. We've created the best generic version we can focus on for you. Important is the right thing to focus on. Urgent is the wrong thing to focus on. As always, average is the enemy. Don't be average. Average sucks, people. Thanks for listening to the Tech Sales Show. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Tech Sales Show. Subscribe to our email list at www.techsaleshow.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Tech Sales Show. Until next week, average is the enemy.